In Marvel Comics, there are characters with powers that are so extreme that they can't be quantified and they can't be classified. Jean Grey as the Phoenix Force had a power that was virtually unrivaled with the exception of a handful of people. Apocalypse is constantly known as one of the most powerful Earthbound characters. Franklin Richards can alter anything in the known cosmos. He can create galaxies, he can create planets, he can bring people back from the dead. And yet, quite possibly, the most powerful Earthbound character is a person that can't do any of that. Instead, his ability is to look at someone like Franklin Richards and to strip his ability away, to suppress it, and turn Franklin Richards from a god into a non-powered human being. What's going on, guys? This is Rob, and today, we're going to be talking about Leech. I just want to get loose when the beat drops. So Leech is part of a group, or at least he was part of a group, called the Morlocks. And we have not gotten into the Morlocks yet, but it is a very interesting story when you start talking about the uh, the Morlocks and the Morlock Massacre, or the, the Mutant Massacre, as it's most notably called, that was the actual story arc itself. Um, but we won't go too far into that. Suffice it to say, uh, when Leech was a baby, he was born uh, as a normal-looking human being. And as a toddler, his powers manifested. And it was at this point that he really kind of took on the physical form that you see now. He had three fingers, he had green skin, and his parents abandoned him, left him to his fate. He was discovered by the mutant tracker Caliban. And Caliban is himself a mutant, and he has the ability to sense and locate other mutants. And it's for this reason that he actually becomes pestilent. Um, the Horseman of Apocalypse at a future point in time. But at this point in time, he takes uh, Leech in and kind of uh, adopts Leech as a surrogate father of sorts, but really kind of officially hands him over to a more human-looking woman named Annalie. And the reason why I say more human-looking is because the Morlocks are a group of mutants that live underground. And the reason why they live underground is because, for whatever reason, uh, their mutant power has manifested in such a way that it's also given them, uh, for all intents, and purposes a very grotesque physical appearance, or at the very least, uh, such a strange physical appearance that they simply just can't live within normal society. Uh, when you look at somebody like Scott Summers, despite the fact that he can shoot optic beams out of his eyes that can cut mountains in half, uh, he can still wear his ruby coarse glasses, and so he can really still blend in with the rest of society, and he doesn't have to worry about uh, being looked at strange or funny, aside from maybe the color of his glasses or something like that. Um, this, you know, Regardless of that, though, <laughs> I don't want to get into a big discussion about Scott Summers' ability to use his powers. Uh, there comes a point in time during the Mutant Massacre story arc where Mr. Sinister really kind of goes on this campaign to eliminate um, the world, or at least most of the world, of what he perceives to be impure mutants. Uh, this is a group that's led by Gambit. Uh, once the the Marauders, which is actually what the group is called, uh, infiltrate and kill most all of the Morlocks, I believe that Caliban and Leech and maybe uh, a character named uh, Taki Matsuya, and I'm, I'm not going to swear that that's correct, um, but I believe that they survive, and I believe they're rescued by the Power Pack, uh, which is kind of a younger group of mutants at the time. Uh, also, um, a group of uh, uh, people called the Ex uh, Exterminators, which are... Um, they're basically X-Factor but they're in the role of hunting mutants, but we're not going to go too far into that. Suffice it to say, um, once this takes place, uh, Leech kind of goes through a series of escapades in his life, where he encounters different groups, he's uh, kind of a, a friend of the X-Men, uh, he is enrolled into a school called St. Simmons, uh, which is a school that takes in uh, normal students, but also takes in mutants, and uh, teaches them what they need to know in order to really kind of uh, exist in, in life as normal as they possibly can. But with regards to Leech's powers himself, what's most interesting about him is that Leech is really kind of the opposite of what we consider to be the most powerful characters. Whenever we look at Marvel Comics and we look at a character and we, we determine how powerful that character is, we really kind of create a correlation, or at the very least look for a correlation, between their power and the amount of damage they can do. A person like Galactus, who can wipe out entire solar systems or galaxies, is viewed by us as being astronomically powerful powerful because of the damage that he can do. A person like Mad Jim Jaspers, whose, uh, who's, I guess, 
alternate universe, um, or I guess one of his alternate universe uh, incantations, warped that universe to such an extreme degree that the universe itself had to be eradicated in order to keep his effects from spilling over into other universes in the Marvel Comics multiverse. Um, you know, we look at these characters and we say, man, they can do so much damage. They must be incredibly powerful. But with Leech, he doesn't possess those abilities. He doesn't have the ability to alter reality on a cosmic scale, and he does, he's not a vector for the Phoenix Force. He is someone who can simply just suppress or negate any mutant power that he comes into contact with as long as that person is within about 10 meters uh, of a 10 meter range of him. Uh, and to me, this really kind of makes him one of the most powerful characters in the Marvel comics because of what use are the abilities to manipulate uh, reality on a cosmic scale if you just simply don't have them? You know, of what use is Franklin Richards if he can't use his powers? You know, of what use is Apocalypse if he can't use his powers? And when you look at someone like Leech, you often see these kind of uh, comparable circumstances where someone has an ability, but because of the nature of their ability, it's the absence of something else that makes them so popular or makes them so powerful. For example, Iceman. Uh, there was a time when Emma Frost took over the physical body of Iceman, of Bobby Drake, and pushed his powers to degrees that he had never conceived of before, that he had never even dreamed of. And she had really kind of uh, hypothesized that he had the potential, or already was, an Omega-level mutant because of his ability to manipulate the cold. And cold is simply the absence of heat. And so the argument that Emma Frost was effectively making is that he has the ability to alter the entire planet. By simply removing heat from the planet itself, he could destroy all life on our planet. He could effectively remove heat from the sun, assuming that he wasn't uh, obliterated by it, and uh, could destroy the entire solar system. There really weren't very many limits to what it was that he could do. And so, when you look at characters in the Marvel comics, it's important to kind of recognize that there's a yin and a yang here. There's a balancing act. There are characters with extreme powers that could effectively destroy our universe. But there are also characters with one simple power. And this one simple power is so extreme that it really kind of overrides every other power because it could, have, in effect, nullify those powers and take them away from the person that has them. And to me, this is really kind of a great example of like a game of chess. There are people that play chess and they make the argument that the best, uh, the best offense is a good defense. The best way to play effective is to simply play it safe. The best way to play effective is to play it smart. And if you had the X-Men going into a battle with the Brotherhood of Evil Mutants, and Leech had somehow found a way to expand his abilities to a virtually unlimited distance, then of what, what challenge would the Brotherhood of Evil Mutants be to someone like Leech? If he could simply just disable their powers, they would be ripe for the pickings. But it's really kind of funny here, because you have to be careful what you do with someone like Leech. A lot of people look at the character Franklin Richards, and they ask the question, why isn't Franklin ever part of any major storyline in Marvel Comics? Well, you I mean, the kid can alter reality on a cosmic scale. Of what use would anybody else be in the storyline? All he'd have to do is show up, kind of phase the person out of existence, and then that's the end of the comic. It'd be a one-page comic. It wouldn't be of any real excitement, and there wouldn't be any real kind of tension or anything like that. With a character like Leech, uh, you know, the fact that he can nullify powers, again, makes him very, very powerful, and so you really can't have him involved that often, because you would have the X-Men that would go into a fight, and they'd go into a fight with Apocalypse, maybe, and then Leech would walk up, and Leech would nullify Apocalypse's powers, and Apocalypse's body would physically be destroyed by Apocalypse's own uh, energies, and then and that would be the end of that. So uh, it's 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 really kind of interesting when you're talking about characters who have incredible abilities, and then you kind of look at how they're written in the Marvel comics because it's a balancing act. You've got to maintain that yin and yang. You've got to take characters who are incredibly powerful and put them in storylines that are interesting, but not in storylines where them fighting creates an improbable scenario. Uh, at the same time, you know, with a character like Leech, you have to include him in storylines where he is interesting, where he is intriguing, and you like to see him there, but not to the point where everybody else's involvement virtually becomes uh, nullified. There's really no point for them being there. So with that being said, I'm going to go ahead and bring this video to an end. I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you did, let me know, and I will catch you guys later. Peace.